Well, welcome back to another RD Works Learning Lab. This particular picture that you see up on the screen here at the moment is a bit of a test snake that I designed um, for testing the power. I believe it was probably somewhere like session 16 where I first noticed my power loss problems. I'm going to be using that again today. During the day and yesterday I've been using my, my machine for cutting the Christmas cards and it's been running at 15% and it has not hiccuped at all. It's run absolutely perfectly. Which makes me wonder what the problem is with my machine. I have ordered a new tube and the new tube has actually arrived but I don't plan to fit the tube until I've carried out some more tests and so consequently this session is all about those tests. It goes into quite a lot of technical details about trying to establish the real power of your machine without any expensive technical equipment. It's the sort of thing that you can do yourself. The first thing I did was to carry out some mode burn tests. I set the power to 15% and I ran 10 tests over 10 minutes. They ran faultlessly. The first test was just as good as the last test. And then I upped the power to 50% and the results were pretty good. If you look at session 16, you'll see how I've used this program in the past by setting the table down and just allowing the heat to dissipate into a piece of steel plate. So we're really gonna start this session off at the, um, at the machine carrying out some 70% mode burn tests and then we'll carry on beyond that to do some what I think you would probably technically call calorimeter tests to check what wattage is actually coming out of the machine. So we'll run each test for approximately five seconds. That's what you'd class as a nice Gaussian form mode burn. Coming up to six minutes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, it's developing a real cone in the centre now. We're coming up for the last test at ten minutes. One, two, three, four. Lost its cone in the middle. It looks as though it might be getting its power back a little bit. It's almost as good as it was at the start. So there was a little bit of a dip in the middle, but basically it's still performing consistently. We've just done our mode burn test at 70% power. Now I've got no idea what 70% means. Hopefully it's 70% of 50 watts. I bought the machine as a 50 watt machine, so it should be 35 watts. But the only way we can begin to check that out is to see how much of that energy and there will be some loss through the mirrors but what we're going to do is to use the defocused energy and collect it here in this 500 grams half a litre of water which is sitting in um, basically sitting in a milk bottle very thin plastic so it doesn't actually absorb too much energy in itself and we're then going to, we're on the outside of it, I've got bubble wrap to make sure we minimise the amount of heat loss. We're not going to be running the test for very long and we're certainly not going to be running it at high temperatures so the thermal loss through the jacket is not going to be very much. And we should be able to calculate basically, fairly crudely, but maybe within 10% roughly what the, uh, what the energy is that's coming out of this machine. So what I'm going to do is to stick this cap in the top here to stop heat loss from the top as well. We're going to put our thermometer in here. I better put that somewhere where I can read it. And there is no way of stopping this machine and allowing the energy to just fire straight down. So what I'm going to have to do is something a little bit tricky. We're going to have to set the speed as low as it can possibly go and I believe that's something like about one millimeter per second so that's what we're going to do now we're just going to set the speed down so let's do pause and there we go that's one millimeter per second 
So we need to first of all drop the table down. Now I want to raise the table now so that I'm firing the laser into the pot of water. I'll just check on my watch and we'll run at one minute intervals. And at time zero we're 21.7. Now I'm keeping a little bit of motion going on here because the surface of the water will begin to boil and you might just be able to see a little bit of steam coming up here. So what I'm trying to do is just agitate it slightly. We'll run it for 15 minutes. And we're currently at 10. And there we are, 25.3. Now I've got to press pause, so let's just give this a final stir to make sure that we are seeing the correct final temperature. Staying at 25.3, so I feel fairly confident that we haven't got any local hot spots. We've been keeping the whole thing mixed up the whole time. So 25.3 is the real temperature. So let's go and do a few calculations. Without giving too much about my age away, it must be 40 or 50 years since I last touched anything like this. But I remember it wasn't particularly complex at the time, so it should be fairly straightforward to work our way through it. Basically, as it says at the top there, what I'm trying to do is to use the specific heat of water as a means of establishing what the output power of the laser is. And the way that you do that is you use a, a fixed quantity, a fixed mass of water um, and you have a constant here which basically is the specific heat of water and you multiply that by the temperature difference that you achieve over a certain period of time. So what we'll do, we'll immediately go on to um, the next page where we've got our first two tests. So this first test was done at 50% power and you saw in the container we had half a kilogram of water. What this equation does is basically tell us that over the 13 minutes of the test it required 13.62 kilojoules of energy to raise the temperature 6.5 degrees C and knowing that one kilojoule per second is equal to a kilowatt or a thousand watts. We can do a quick calculation here which tells us that we've basically got about 17 watts being generated by the machine at 50% power. If that's 50% power then it means that probably I've only got a 40 watt laser. I thought I bought a 50 watt laser. So we now move on to test 2 where we raise the power to 70%. The bottom line is it only generated 8.3 watts of average heating power for the 15 minutes. It may well have started off at a high wattage but it dropped off very very quickly and so that the average over 15 minutes was only 8.3 watts. I was concerned that something was wrong so I repeated the tests. So at 50% power 19.1 watts still indicates that I may well have a 40 watt laser tube. But when we go on to the 70% test, again, it's absolutely rubbish. Look, we've only got 6.5 watt output this time for 15 minutes. And just to validate those results, here we can see the graphs of the way in which the temperature was rising. And if you look at the pink and the blue graph, you'll see that they're the 70% graphs and they're not rising very much at all. In other words, for a huge amount of supposedly 70% power, they're not doing much to warm the water up. Where the 50% power curves are doing a good steady job of raising the water temperature. Now that I've uh, shown you how to make your own calorimeter and test your own machine, I think I've only got one choice and that is to change the tube on my machine and try the whole set of tests again. 
So I think the next video will be all about um, changing the tube and carrying out some more tests to establish just what power my new tube is.